give honors to all the members of the Morris Scientific of America. And I want to especially give honors to you, the members of the Morris Scientific of America branch of number 43 for showing up on your Friday. For your other way in which Allah shows upon the planet, and when you honor man, you honor Allah. So I give you major honors. All right. So today's topic is relationships of love. We're going to go over this and we're going to start digging in because certain of the things that we are now approaching, I've told you about, but maybe you forgot because it's easy to forget certain because they're not the priority sometimes on your plate. Okay. But we're moving into areas that's going to require everybody to pick their game up. What do I mean by that? I mean to pick your understanding up of what you're, not only what you're doing here, that's primary. You really need to get a dig, really good understanding because people have different concepts, right? And we only go by the concept in which the proper number drew out the way for us because we've had major success. Okay. So it's really kind of that simple. All right, but the other thing also is for um, us to do what he says when he says learn to love instead of hate. This is learn to get your nobility out, right? Too many of us are lazy on how they present their character. Your certain amount of our people's character is rough. They're not using their acts. They're not using anything. They're blunt. And I've observed people for a while, and now that I've had a chance to be around people and see a lot of things, we need to really dig deep and start digging now <clears throat> because it's gonna require your nobility to take you further into where we're going in this love age. And if you can't hold on, you're gonna implode. The Prophet Noble Duali tells us to learn to love instead of hate for a reason. Listen to that, what he said. So turn in your Quran first to the back. Excuse me, to the front page of the back cover. All right. It says the fallen and daughters of the Asiatic nation of America. That's you and I. Let's make no mistake about that. Latinos, anyone who comes in from the surrounding islands or any portion of the Americas, any blood, whatever, right? You're still an American. And um, this is talking to you. The fallen, you are fallen. And a lot of y'all acting like y'all not because of your pride and ego. And you don't want to address your fallen state, but that's why you're here. Wow. That's the real reason you're here is because of your fallen state. Some people's refinement in their fallen state right now is a lot better than others. It's, you know, and it's good. But we need those who have yet to pinpoint things or start to reflect or look at themselves know the majority of time you're presenting a fallen state. Someone who's a little bit rude, someone who, who doesn't know themselves, someone who's pushy in, in positions where they shouldn't be, those who break laws of Islam. This is why you've gotten back to, to your law, because you, you, you've forgotten them. And a lot of us are acting like, you know, it's all good. And no, it's not. Or you wouldn't even be here. You'd have already, sir, you've already passed this test and been on your back to the soul plane waiting for the, for the gold, for the rest of the golden age to kick in. But you're not there. You're still here, which means you still have lessons to learn. So one of the first lessons we want to learn today and continue to learn is love. Because you think you know what love is. And I'm about to break the ad deck of one of these. I introduced it a couple weeks ago. And we all know this, every last one of us. All right, so we're gonna go into the relationships of love. So please turn to chapter one. Keep in mind act three, where it says Allah is love. Also keep in mind where it says the nearest place you can meet Allah is in your heart. Because we're about to dig into the heart. I've told you guys, maybe not new people, maybe haven't heard part about where you need to filter things through the heart before you make a decision. Too many of you are moving out on so much emotion and making way out wrong decisions. 
because your emotions, which is dealing with your limbic system, which is the brain, which we in Egypt used to snatch out and throw away and enshrine the heart for a reason. In these lessons, the nearest place you can meet Allah is in the heart, which means before you go out and make a decision, you should be filtering your question and what you want to move out on through the heart. The heart has just as many neurons as the brain does. It's thinking. That's why you ever heard, oh, I felt, you know, went with my first mind or, you know, I just didn't feel, man, that's your heart. <laughs> Giving you a good understanding of what's going on around you because your heart has a particular uh, magnetic frequency that outspans your brain frequency. Your heart actually is where your aura comes from. And not the brain. No, not the brain. The brain is the seat of the lower cell. All right, so look at this. So we're gonna go into who is, you know, wh what is love? Because too many people think they know what love is and they mistaken it for, it's mistaken it for an ejaculation on orgasm. And this is where we go wrong. That's a part of it when you're, when you are in love and both are in tune. It's a part of it, no doubt. Right, but look at this. So we're gonna go kind of deal today. Please put your mics on mute. We're also gonna go into unless you have a question. How do we? How do we love? And how to be in love? Also, how to be in love with another? And it's all right here given to you. Why do you need this? Because the prophet said we need to learn to love instead of hate. And if you take a good look around you and at your own character, you really don't know what love is. We got baby mamas and baby daddies. I'm talking about also the overall race, the Asiatic race who has fallen, do not know what love is. So we have these superficial, the degraded concepts of family. And it's being now oozed out on others. It's called chaos. And we call it, the ghetto calls it baby mama and baby daddy stuff and drama. All right, so we're going to also go into, you know, <clears throat> what we have been taught. Remember, we have what is known as a European psychology we've created, what is known as mental slavery. This is why when some people look into the eyes of European, they drop their eyes and their, their, their shoulders go slump. Instead of, you know, looking directly into their eyes and squaring up like a man or a woman and communicating your particular point of view. So we're going to go into this mental slavery. We're going to try to heal this before we get to this particular birthright that's on its way. And for all you know, it's already showed up. Thus our concepts of love do, you know, we're gonna go into these particular concepts of love, right? So the prophet said one thing that a lot of people skip off. We said we need to learn to love. Learn. And this is where, if you're honest, did you really learn? Or did you just thought you knew what it was because you heard the homie? Are the homegirl and somebody gave you some weird concept? Or did you learn love from porno? I mean, let's keep it 100. Mm. You know, a lot of people learn love from, from weird situations because they maybe they, they, they didn't have the love in their family. So how in the world do you think you know what love is? And then how do you know if you're in love and someone else is giving you love if you can't even define it within your own relationships or within your own mind? All right, so let's go define these things so that we can really get a better understanding. Because most people learn love off of TV, off of uh, the Cosby show. And they think that's what a family is. Most people are learning love today off of videos and music. And that's what they think is love. All right. All right. So now that I made that point, chapter one, please turn to chapter one in your Holy Quran, the Moore Science Temple of America. The Holy Quran, the more science temple of America with the logo circle seven divine compared by the, prophet, the noble prophet Drew Ali, divine instructions, chapter one, the creation and the fall of man. And then, you know, that song earlier, you know, by Stevie Wonder, you know, was so powerful and so deep. But anyway, being today's topic, I didn't even mean, I didn't even play that. But, uh, all right, so take a look at this. Let's go down to the parts where we left off last time dealing with the attributes. So let's reintroduce that and then we're going to go deep. 
we're going to dig away the uh, rocky soil so that we can see love. All right, so it says here, it says, the thoughts of Allah are everlasting. Oh, wow, this is so powerful. The thoughts of Allah are everlasting. Of the past unto the never-ending days to come. And so is man, comma, the spirit man. But man, like every other thought of Allah, was but a seed. A seed that held within itself the potencies of Allah. Just as the seeds of any plant of earth holds deep within itself the attributes of every part of that special plant. Now I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna go on a little bit. So spirit man, as a seed of Allah held deep within himself the attributes of every part of Allah. Now see, it's not. This is the this is the part you gotta really pay attention to because where I'm about to go, all right? Now seeds are perfect. Are perfect. Are as perfect as the source from which they come but they are not unfolded into life made manifest. The child is as perfect as the mother is. So man, the seed, must be deeply planted in a soil that he might grow. Unfold as does the bud unfold to show the flower. The human seed that came forth from the heart of Allah, this is, here it is, getting there right here. The human seed that came forth from the heart of Allah was fully ordained to be the Lord of the plain of soul and of uh, the plain of things made manifest. So Allah, the husband man of everything that is, threw forth his human seed in the soil of soul. I'm stopping right there. It's a lot, a whole lot of sin. Excuse me for bending down and reading. You know, I should have read it kind of like right there, but I can't All right, so anyway, let's look at this because this is like off the chain. I mean, all right, so the thoughts of Allah are everlasting. That means right now, if I was to ask you where's the nearest place you can meet Allah, what would be your answer? The heart. The heart. The heart. The heart. Okay. So, so just take an understanding of that for a moment. That thought is still here with you because it's everlasting. Now let's move on. How is it here? How though? Because he told you everything right here. Also keep in mind what Act 6 says about Allah. Excuse me, Act 3. What does Act 3 say Allah, who Allah is? Who is Allah in Act 3? Love. Right. Say it again. Love, right? Because Allah is love. Because Allah is love. And this is where we're going. So the topic is learning how to love, you know? All right, so this is how we this is how we do it. And this has not been told for a long time. So I've been anyway, I know it's a little hard to believe, but you know, I'm gonna we've been given permission, or I have, to give you this. Alright, so check this out. Alright, so Allah the husband, first and foremost, right there. Allah has taken on a title of the husband. Now, that has attributes. The husband man has attributes behind it. He's about to, Allah's showing you how not only to love yourself, but what love is and how to utilize it to bring forth love. Now let's look at this. So Allah, the husband man. Now he plants, I'm paraphrasing as I'm going through this game, right? So, but plants his seed, which is perfect, in the soil of soul. Soil of soul being the woman. It is so deep, that soil of soul, to understand that part right here, those three words, in the context and content of what we just said. For the soil, has to be right. 
The soil being a representation of the soul or, or the mind. What is soil? What type of, you know, there's many types of soil. There's certain soil you can't grow nothing in because it don't want to listen. It doesn't want to take the water of life, which means water. Excuse me. Hello? You okay? Um, can you hear me? I just wanted to make a comment, if you don't mind. Not right now, sis. We make comments. Okay. We make comments at the end. Okay, I apologize. No, you're okay. Please write it down, and we can make those comments. I haven't yet to even finish the point. All right. I hope I didn't. You know, hope you don't get upset about that. All right. So, the soil is very important. The soil of soul. Why? Because he's telling us something here. So, a lot of the husband man, the husband man. Yes, that's of everything. You got to understand its context. Through forth his human seed. This is DNA in the soil of soul. This is the woman. Where else is he going to plant deeply his seed? But in the soil of soul. Soil is important because there's dead soils out here. There's certain soil that when you plant something, it only grows halfway. There is other soils when you plant something, it grows all the way up into a huge, unbelievable fruit producing grove. Why? Because the soil has been tilled. The soul's been tend to. The soul's been enriched. You ever seen real good soil? It's deep, it's dark, it's black, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It can grow anything. Wow. Right? Now you gotta understand that part because it's dealing with the woman's mind. Women needs to have a clean soil, a pure and rich and healthy soil. Or mine. So that when Allah the husband man, meaning the man who has the attributes, you see what it said before that? Allah the husband man. This means that it's not just a regular bruh planting these particular things. Uh uh. It is one who has reached a certain particular part of his mind, who understands what a husband is, is ready to now plant his, his, his seed, which is perfect deeply into the soil of soul, and thus we're gonna produce perfected things. Why? Because Allah is perfect. And what are we doing here but to reach perfected men? So let's look at how we're gonna do this. So, in the verse here, it tells us everything to do. It tells us everything to do, what to go look at. It says here, deep within itself, the attributes, this is on page, um, page four or on the first page and it says but uh, but man like every other thought that's the part i'm at of allah was but a seed all right and then near the end it says and uh allah just as the seed of any plant of earth holds deep within itself the attributes the attributes of every part of that special plant now let's go learn how to love because Allah is love. And if he has attributes, these are attributes of love. And if you have yet to master or come into a harmonic frequency or in tune with one of those attributes, this is how we understand what love is. We don't go look at love on television. We go to the source. Allah is the source of love. So we already got a way to love. Because we, our father himself is love. <laughs> so check it out. 99 attributes on, right? Now, I'm going to give you seven, man, that you must have to be a good husband. This is what was missing. Then we're going to go to the woman. So, take your pen out, brothers. I'm not playing, you guys. Because some of y'all gonna get shook away from us if y'all not getting with this love thing, man. We're not gonna have niggas. We're gonna have professionals. Honorable people. Is that Wanda? Is that sister? Is that Wanda? Oh, was ah, Praise Allah, Sister Wanda. Oh, Brooks L. Uh, 
praise our law. My goodness, bro, you about to bring a tear to bro. It's live, Wanda. A lot. All right, we're going to talk after this. It's, it's a lot. Wow. It's my music. Okay. So check this out, though. I'm glad to see you, sis. For real. Praise our law. All right, so the source of love. Let's go to the source of love, brothers, so that we can see what it means to be the husband man that plants this seed in our, you know, deeply and, and right so that we ain't no baby daddy. Hmm? She don't look at you like you a baby. Call you a baby daddy. You gotta be a husband or a man. Understand? All right, so this is how we do it. Here are the, the, the seven of them. Now, the order may be a little, you know, get the order, you know, the order's there. I'll show you that a little later. But first, get the seven. All right, so they're in the attributes of Allah. So last week I asked you, you know, I pulled up the 99 attributes, so hold on. All right. So, all right, we'll look at a few of these. All right, so, I mean, this is where you go. This is the source of love. And when you understand how to use the attributes, then you then become that source. We are to reach perfected man. Allah is perfect. If he's giving you 99 attributes, then you to utilize the attributes in your meditation and your repetitive prayer to get these parts and then work on being these things. You may not master every seven of them or all 99, I don't believe you. Anyway, it takes a minute to master every last 99. I mean, you will be coming back for a minute like we are. Although the seven, you can become, you know, over a lifetime a master of, hopefully. But just to master one of them, to master one, it's the, one of the greatest achievements of a more. Because y'all looking at things too much. We got the gold, we got the silver, we'll get there in a minute. Let's go to love, within, okay? And then we'll get to this other stuff, the, uh, the trivial stuff outside of ourselves. Because once we get the things within, we know how to utilize the things outside of ourselves, right? All right, so let's look at this, brothers. Here we go, number one. You want to be Al Malik, which means the king. Or the let's translate this though, right? Al Malik, the king, the sovereign, the true and ultimate king. Now, you have to translate this into the king being the sovereign over what? Your land, over your estate. In other words, a man is king when he has his land. If you understand what a king is, or an Al Malik, there's a lot behind it because you can't be a sovereign without land. So the whole thing is really to bring this into the time now, or to look at as the husband, it means that you must be an Al Malik, one who is the king or, of, of his land or his estate. So you must have a home. You must be a home, why? Because there the sovereign, the king has resources, y'all. Wow. Okay, on his estate, there are resources where he can go dig a hole and pull out the silver pull out the gold and manage certain things that he needs to manage for his family. All right? You understand that? So, you know, so to be the king, which, what is that? That means commodity money. Commodity money is resource money that you pull out the ground, like timber, which makes paper, which makes homes, which is the trees on your land, which is the fish in your, off your coast, in the marsh areas, because everybody loves red snapper. These are the things that make you the sovereign or the king because you can provide the resources from your land. All right, so the next thing, that's Al Malik. Al Rahman, the compassionate. These are the things that you must have as a husband. Why? Because we have to have more appreciation for womanhood. So you got to have, you got to be compassionate. And you got to learn these things because you got to learn to love. Love has 99 attributes. All right? These are action-oriented words, because love is a verb. So al Mumin, the source of safety. As a husband, you must provide, you must master your al Mumin, meaning the source of safety. 
This is why brothers have a hard time because they're listening to a European psychology and not going to the heart and understanding that we already have a plan. And the plan is Allah. And he's already provided you the things you need to be successful here. If you would become the source of safety by having that home, now you have to provide shelter and resources. As a husband, remember we're speaking on the husband, We'll get to how to be a man part in a minute because there's the part in the attributes. Let's go here real quick. Right, the, sh the shield, the shielder, the defender, the afflictor. These are attributes of Allah. And you know when we when when we get this 91 attribute to the child or for a man, the ad the dar is when he's about seven, so he can break fear. The al dar is the ritual we take children through to break fear. This is why you got a lot of men out here with a lot of fear. Because they haven't tapped into the 99 attributes of themselves which dwells within their heart. And it's the first place you can meet them, but if you don't know what to say, you're trying to get what when you meet Allah? The Avenger, you're trying to be the Avenger? What are you gonna go avenge? Well, that's al Moon Taqween. And there's things behind that. There's the chapters right there. It tells you how to tune into that. But you also have them in your Quran. So let's move on. There is al muhaimin the guardian, the protector. You got to be able to protect as the husband. Somebody run up, talking crap. You want you got to be able to knock them out, put one in them. I mean, that's your wife. That's some children right there. Somebody too much crazy, man. You better have a sword and and know how to use it and have no regrets that's when long. you're protecting your family, man. That's slow. You understand? That is what we are, bro. These are the attributes that our father left us. Why? Because we we say that's our father. So we also need to be brothers. El Hakim happens to be my Muslim name, Muslim name. But El Hakim means the wise, such as being wise in your affairs, such as being wise with your your wife, your woman, your, your children making the wise decision from wisdom. And these are things you gotta learn. This is what the great university that Jesus went to. This is the great university that you're in. That's why he says you got instructions. Al-Wakil, Al the trustworthy. As a husband, man, you gotta be dependable. You got to be dependable, man. That's the choice you made. These are the attributes of a husband. You got to be trustworthy. You got to be dependable. You got to be there when you tell your wife and your children you're going to be there, man. Hmm. How about L in the last one, right? The seventh, L Gaim, the rich. What's wrong with that? You sure don't want to be the poor and the broke and the hungry, right? So these are the attributes of a husband that given to you from your father that you already got in. This is how we learn to love is by activating the DNA. By first understanding what's in the DNA. Attributes, man. Praise Allah. When I, before I begin a thing, sometimes I go to an attribute and be like, I need the um, the all seen, so I don't get fooled by these people. So I may go into meditation just on the all seen and begin to quote, you know, the, uh, use the uh, the Arabic as the mantra, but have the understanding of the all seen and the thing that I need to go see. So now I'm preparing my mind. So when someone's trying to lie to me now, I can penetrate that, uh-uh, so I can see through it. 
Why? Because I got the attribute of the all seeing, the all knowing in me. Why? Because the nearest place I can meet our lives in my heart. Am I making any sense? Are y'all with me or am I going too far? Islam, yes, you are. Islam. Islam. Islam, Chief. I'm going to need them again. Okay. So we're going to go. Mm hmm. All right, so praise Allah. So let's go look at the sisters, okay? All right, so as a husband man, you know, the sisters have a, I mean, as a wife, right? Excuse me. As the husband man, you have attributes. And as a wife, she has attributes that she needs to, um, uh, sometimes you guys just have natural. Y'all have a lot of sisters have natural. So maybe it needs to be refined in, in a lot of women. Right, but here's a few of them, and these are seven. So, sisters, write these down. This is really coming from on high. That's why I asked you to write it down. All right, I know that's hard. I don't know if that's hard to comprehend. All right, let me find the rest of them. Here they go. All right, so for a Moorish woman or for a wife, you are Al Muquit, the nourisher. Do you really know how to nourish? I mean, a lot of you have it naturally, but do you have you learned it? To tap into that. At any, you know what I mean? So that's why I said a lot of you do have it naturally, but there's an attribute there for that. Another one. Al Waqil, the trusted. Your husband wanna trust you. That you ain't gonna be gossiping. You know what? A gossiping woman is not a trustful woman. You understand that? Your husband's got to be able to trust you, but if he sees you always gossiping, he ain't going to tell you his stuff. Why? You just going to spread it everywhere. Bragging. Or, or trying to outdo the next thing. You know, seriously, these are attributes that will cut the head off of the ones you already got by European psychology. And one of them for the sisters is gossip. You know, in, in, in true Islam, there is no gossiping. We don't do that. But y'all got this European psychology and you expect us constantly to, you know, to look over it. Man, ain't nobody looking over this stuff no more with y'all. You can be replaced. Y'all sisters can be replaced just like men can. What you think? What do you think is going on around here? Think we want a bunch of Negro sisters, but half the time causing the majority of the problems anyway. Because you don't want to get the attributes. You want to settle on what you thought you know. We want to bring forth God. Y'all got some of the most divine gifts forever that could even in existence, but you don't want to use them. So please get them and start to use them. You're El Mayer, the giver of life. Do you understand that? Goodness. Contemplate on that for a moment. Because the life you bring forth, you're as perfect as your mama is. So if you're so unemotional, you're so disbalanced and just can't for one moment just, you know, you know, then my goodness. And you wonder why there's a lot of brothers who can't make decisions. Who can't just tell you that they really love you and just want to get a mirror? Al Muhaimin, the guardian, the protector. You have that responsibility too when the child's there. You are the protector and the guardian also. So that would be number four. And the fifth one. I mean, I can give you a lot more, but let's just take seven and deal with those. Al Wadil, the loving, the kind. You know, brothers truly want a loving sister. Not one to argue with him all the damn time. Challenge every single thing he says. He ain't right. I mean, he ain't wrong all the time. That's just you and your ego. As long. Brothers want kindness from their wife. 
They, it's hard out there. Hmm. So, it's loud. You know, it's loud. It's not grand chairman. Yes, the uh, the green the screen, excuse me, is not in sync with what you keep telling us. So, you up there? Yeah, I, you I, I'm okay. Praise Allah. Yeah, I was just going over a little bit of them to show you where I'm. It's not, but it's good, Mo, and it, it, I think it helps for us to see it up here too. Oh, okay. And I'll find the one I'm speaking with. Okay. So let's look for the uh, what I say L. Uh, what do I do? What do you say, number seven? Do. Number four, something like. That. All right. Well, number ninety-eight also. Oh no! Zoom. Quiet. Unexpected. Brief. Just please stop utilizing control, but let me do it. Thank you. All right. So you're the first teacher of the child. You're as perfect as your mother is. You know, which means because you got to hate for your baby daddy, you're going to raise a homosexual. All right, so anyway, I hope you guys can hear me now. All right, I'm not going to take up all your time. All right, so uh, let's move on. All right, so where was I? Oh yeah, so I was looking for him, but I'll, I'll just tell you. I mean, you can go look him up. You can just go put him up on Google like I did. I mean, it's really easy. All right, so then we have also for the sisters, Al Jabbar, the irresistible. I mean, you know, you wanna, hello? You wanna be irresistible for your man. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the way we gotta look at it. You know, but I thought that one kind of fit. Maybe that was a little selfish on my part. But the compeller, the improver of affairs, the reason I say the improver of affairs is because sisters have a tendency to enhance brothers and a game just gets back. You know, for some reason, I don't, you know, maybe that's just the way it is, right? But you have that natural, that, that, that beautiful gift. And in, in, a, in a relationship, husband and wife, that would be you know, one of the great attributes. Al Muswair, the fashioner of forms. That goes to chapter one, when you are as perfect as your mother is. You're actually fashioning the child because the brain is the first thing that's created, right? And, the, and going through the nine gestational processes, right? So when you, wow. when you think that, you know, the spark of life, when we bring the spark and y'all get to split in that egg, it's popping. You know what I'm saying? This is where we got to start teaching the child, right? Because, you know, so anyway, I just thought I'd hit you with a few of those, right? And, um, We'll deal with a few more and hope I didn't go too far. But uh, so the last part here is that remember, Allah is perfect. And our job here is to reach perfected man. The only way to do it is to get the attributes firmly rooted in within you. All right? So many of us are uh, have tendencies to be uh, traumatized and we have a lot of trauma. This is how you get rid of the trauma, but you got to work on yourself. It's not a point of just, oh, I need to do shadow work and make it sound good, shadow work. I don't care. It sounds like some weird stuff just to sound fancy. It's called the lower self, y'all. Yeah? It's called work on that. You know, I know shadow, lower self, and whatever. Work on it. All right? So that's what I got for you on that. And I hope I've, um, there's a lot more. I just want to give you the ones I'll give you the ones. All right. So I hope you wrote a few of those down. You know, takes if you don't like the ones I did, please take seven of the 99 attributes of Allah and then, you know, start to uh, put them in your meditation and uh, you'll start to see that the old habits will become the new habits. All right, so praise Allah. All right, the next thing I want to communicate before we end it, you know, um, was, all right, so I sent, uh, what time is it?